It is time for the Class 3A state championship here on 45 TV. The defending state champion, Vanilla St. Margaret's Red Knights, taking on the two seed, the De La Salle Islanders. It's been a good day for the one seed so far. Champions in 1A and 2A, Good Hue and Providence Academy, respectively, both came in as one seeds and left as state champions. Hey, everybody, thanks for tuning back in with us. Chris Long along with Marissa Kate. These two teams are almost neighbors. De La Salle downtown, Vanilla St. Margaret's just an exit or two away. They're going to know each other very well. They are. These two teams met up earlier in the season with De La Salle winning, but Benilde St. Margaret was without their star player, Olivia Olsen. So it'll be interesting to see how that matchup changes tonight. And since that defeat to De La Salle, Benilde St. Margaret's has won 23 consecutive games. That's a testament to how good Olivia Olsen, the future Michigan Wolverine, is. She's a fantastic player. She's having a great tournament so far. Something people don't know about her is that she's also an incredible defender. She was Metro West Defensive Player of the Year. De La Salle, Anisha Scott is their top scorer, but she has had great support from several players. Jordan Johnson has had an outstanding state tournament. She has. She had 20 in their game yesterday, and I think when you get to the state championship game, you always need players to give you a little bit of extra, and that's what De La Salle has had so far. And we talked about it, or I talked about it coming in. The top seeds of Benilde St. Margaret's certainly hoping that trend holds as Goodhue and Providence Academy won as the one seeds, but De La Salle 13 state appearances, six in the last eight years. They've won four titles. This is an expectation for this program to not just get here, but to win. It is. I think, you know, it'll be interesting to see the tempo of the game once the ball tips off. Both teams like to play up and down type of basketball, but who can settle into their offensive strategy first will be key. The first two games today, fantastic. We're hoping for two more here. Before we send it to Dave Lee and Spencer Tollickson to call the game, let's meet the players with Jane Voss. Good evening and welcome to Williams Arena for this Class 3A championship game of the 2024 Girls State Basketball Tournament. At this time, we'd like to introduce the starting lineups for this final game between the number one seed with a record of 26 and 5, the Section 6 champions, the Red Knights of Benilde St. Margaret's High School. And the number two seed with a record of 27 and three, the section four champions, the Islanders of De La Salle High School. Now let's meet the starting lineups for this championship game and we will start with the visitors from Benilde St. Margaret. A six foot one senior forward, number one, Olivia Olson. A five foot nine guard, ninth grader, number four, Sydney Friedley. A five foot 11 junior guard, number five, Zahara Bishop. A five foot 10 ninth grade guard, number 13, Presley Watkins. And a six foot junior forward, number 33, Kate Kapsner. The head coach of the Red Knights, Tim Ellefson. Now let's meet the starters from the home team from De La Salle. A five foot seven junior guard, number 12, Anisha Scott. A five foot ten ninth grade guard, number 22, Layla Moses. A five foot eight sophomore guard, number 23, Madeline Blaylark. A five foot ten junior forward, number 24, Ariana Maester. And a six foot two junior forward, number 50, Jordan Johnson. The head coach of the Islanders, James Fassett. The officials for this championship game are umpire Eric Rain, referee Cheryl Belitho, and umpire Zach Freeman. Fans, to respect and honor our country, we ask that you please rise, remove your hats as we honor America as we play our national anthem.
starting lineup show brought to you by Education Minnesota, the voice for professional educators and students. Well, Spencer, here we go. Here we go. De La Salle, you look at their five that they have on the floor. They start the game with it's a pretty balanced lineup. They're, of course, led by Scott, their five foot seven guard, averages 18 points a game. But after that, it's a balanced effort. Nine points, nine points, seven points, 12 points, seven points, four points. It's a sign to me of a team that trusts one another, maybe poised to go on a big run. You look at them on the other hand, but Nild State Margaret and Olivia Olson, the star senior, I guess you could call her a, a, a guard wing forward headed to Michigan. What a tournament she's had 35 in game one, 32 to get her team to this position. Let's get this thing started, huh, Dave? And away we go, and on tip goes into the hands of the Red Knights, and right to Olsen down in the corner. And then she'll feel, uh, feed it out there, and they'll kind of rotate around a little bit, figure out this defense. Kapsner, Olsen. And a little bump, and there's a whistle and a foul. Yeah, you're right. She really lit it up, uh, Spencer Mann. She had a just a super game, and she looked so good. In those first two games, as did Anisha Scott. We really were impressed with her. Stepped up big. You know, if you're going to make a run like Benilde St. Margaret is doing in a state tournament, you got to have somebody come along with your star. And, and Scott's been able to do that. Olivia Olson, we get a good look at here, headed to Michigan. I mean, it's an absolute star in Ann Arbor. She is their focal point on the offensive end. Everything that they do runs through her. They look for her in the post. They will slow down at times to find her in the post up area. And they'll go to that one on one matchup. And Jordan Johnson gets past Olsen and gets the first field goal of this game. And how about that? They go right back inside to their center and Jordan Johnson, zero hesitation, takes it right through Olsen. And on the kick out, the three is too hard, but Olsen chasing down a hard rebound way out to the top. Just out of pure hustle. Friedley's open. Boom, right there. She's got that nice, easy going stroke. Offensive rebounds lead to open threes. Benil St. Margaret was able to take advantage of corralling an offensive board and hunting a three. We're also seeing BSM come out in a little bit of a token pressure just to make De La Salle think about bringing the ball up the court. Scott, and there's a no secret to what they want to do. Go down low if they can. Here comes Olsen. They're really a good ball handler at six foot two, a senior wing player. Draws a foul on the shot, and they were tight on her. I mean, she's pretty wise. I don't know if she knew she had a good angle, but she knew she had the defense hanging on her. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good defense there by De La Salle, but Olsen just able to back her opponent down and a good turnaround jump shot. That one, the official, a little bit late on the call, but absolutely got that call correct as Olsen goes to the line for two. Perfect. Good shooter, one of the best in the state tournament at 80 percent. But yeah. uh, Anisha Scott is 85 percent for De La Salle. And the best number I think I've seen in the tournament is Madeline Blaylark for De La Salle. She's an 88 percent free throw shooter. And you throw up those numbers near me. I don't want to jinx them. I might get too close with my sub 50, Dave. <laughs> Here's Anisha Scott out on top, guarded by Olsen. Now a trap. Scott's open, three on the way. Got a nice game. Yeah, just a broken down play, and De La Salle was able to take advantage. You could tell BSM got a little bit scattered on the defensive side. Great ball movement by De La Salle in the half court to find a shooter. Board. Ariana Meister. Scott Meister trying to cut down inside. Nothing there. Cut off by Bishop. Rotate it around a little bit, see where they can get a shot off. And on the battle for the board, coming up from behind, good hustle, but now a whistle and a foul apparently away from the play. It'll be on Bishop. Back to that last bucket by De La Salle. They were double teamed coming out of a trap. Good ball movement. And Scott trying to find her rhythm. The leading scorer on this Islander team comes into this one at 18 points a game. She had 29 in the game to get to the title. Trimetro champs with the ball. 
And underneath, and a good drive there by Layla Moses, her first bucket of the game. De La Salle with a one-point lead to start off this championship game tonight. There's a deep three, and boy, Bishop lined that baby up and followed through beautifully. Scott, there's that trap. Olsen. The steal, one-on-one, -on -one, she'll take it in. It's an automatic there. Tremendous body control that time by Olivia Olsen, generating the turnover out of the trap. They get up and down and transition for the easy deuce, and James Fawcett, head coach of the Islander, needs a timeout to talk it over. Let's go back to a possession before. Bishop, a spot-up shooter deep in the corner. Just silky smooth at 5'11". Now let's go back to that last basket. Olivia Olsen able to get out in transition. Seemingly she was able to keep her body control, almost using her body as a shield, not allowing the defender to get from the backside to go to contest that shot. Benilde St. Margaret, I believe, might have found something in that a little bit of that running gun that they're coming out in a called a three quarter almost a full court token pressure press. But what they do is they, they bait the Islanders to fall back and allow them to bring the ball up. And as soon as they're crossing half court, they send another defender over to trap. So really you're using the half court line and you have another two defenders that create a wall. They've been able to generate the turnovers that they've been ne needed to to get some high percentage looks has BSM Scott. Back out, down in the corner, Madeline Blaylark. Moses, Scott, she's the playmaker. Inside, and then a good feed. Boy, Jordan Johnson with a beautiful feed over to Meister. Not sure if Penild St. Margaret was in a 2-3 zone that possession. It was almost an amoeba-like zone. That said, De La Salle recognized whatever defense they were able to detect and get behind the baseline really good looking offensive set against that potentially zone in the lane rebound Johnson the 6 1 senior that's her right there down in that deep corner and the shot is on the way just off the money there for Moses and on the rebound bodies down whistle. Let's go back to that last deal of cell offensive possession and it appears though BSM look almost a 2-3 zone and how do you beat the 2-3 zone get behind the defense. Mochester did a really good job of getting behind the defense. Believe it was Freely who was on the, the extended wing. That's just really good recognition in the game by the Islanders to say hey look Benilde St. Margaret's in a 2-3 zone. That's okay. They're trying to disguise it. That's also all right. We're going to break it down by getting to the baseline and behind it. Olivia Olson. Spin move, fade away. How do you stop it? At six foot two with that crafty spin and that feathery touch. I don't know, Dave. That's the reason why she's averaging 25 points a game and headed to the Michigan Ann Arbor Wolverines is because you can't stop her. Baseline. Ball knocked loose. Could be a foul on Olsen over the back. I think so. Now watch Olivia Olsen. Sizes up the defense. Really great ball fake with the jab step and the feathery pirouette over the stretched arm of the defender. Olivia Olsen off to a really hot start here this evening. Ball right through the heart of the bucket right there for De La Salle. Big shot, three pointer, and then right away back on defense for Blaylar. I guess we shouldn't be surprised given the outcome of the way the first two games unfolded in the afternoon session today. We're in for a treat for this one as well. Olivia there it is again. Wow. So crafty so talented spinning away from the defense weight on her back foot. Scott. Working in the lane, see what's open there. No threes allowed, and sent out to the corner. They got room here. Right into Olsen's hand. She's got a two-on-two -two break. Scott almost got the but might have had enough on that ball to make it go awry on that layup. Good defense without getting a foul. Three on the way. Looks good. Blaylark. De La Salle not afraid to push the tempo, and with that three, they tie it up. 
They're hunting threes in transition. Benilde St. Margaret looks a little bit gassed right now. De La Salle knows that they're looking to get out in the break. Watkins. Had a good semifinal game. Ball picked right off by Scott again. And she'll push it. She's got a three on three, but she'll take it herself and kick it. And another three on the way. That one will not go. And the rebound held down by Zahara Bishop. And she'll push it up. She's got a lead pass to Watkins. And she grabs it and puts it in all in the same motion. Tremendous pace to this basketball game right now. All 10 girls on the floor are gassed. You might even be able to throw the three officials and the two guys sitting here watching it. Everybody gasping for air. Scott, that's her shot. She did a lot of that in the semis. Yeah, not much defense at this point in time. A lot of hands on the knees. These ladies are indeed tired. It's time to dig deep. We haven't had a stoppage of play in quite some time. Watkins underneath Olsen trying to go for the shot. And a foul called on Scott. Timeout. The Islanders. Don't go ahead, Dave. Oh, we're staying here. Okay. Fake timeout. Fake timeout. Good player. Good player stays on the court till you're sure there's a timeout. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> Olivia. Till that putt's conceded, you can't pick it up, Dave. <laughs> I didn't know that. You don't get many of them, do you? That's, that's why you didn't know how it works. Why no one you just play with me. I couldn't yeah. figure it out. <laughs> well, that and that you're begging the whole time for it, but that's okay. Well. Look at those state tournament numbers. 34 points a game, seven rebounds. Just on a tear right now, Olivia Olsen, and she picks up right where she's left off with 10 points. Olivia Olsen and Benilde St. Margaret, De La Salle Islanders, we're in a close one here at Williams. One point game. By Olivia, let's go back to that last possession. How about the Bishop dime here in transition? Just delivers a strike to Olsen. The beautiful left hand off the glass. Nice, crisp chest pass. That one had some juice on it. Little pressure applied here. Naomi Whitaker Hill in the game. Now she goes five, and boy, they're not going to waste any time. Right to the basket, and let's shoot. And Starks has a bucket. Yeah, De La Salle grabs their very first lead of the game, and that time they wasted no time in carving up the BSM zone. Bishop takes a look, won't top. Olsen. Presley Watkins for the three. That looks good. Oh, really good action. For those of you watching and paying attention at home, how you break down a zone defense, get the ball to the Big Ten logo right in the middle. That inside-out action more often than not will lead to an open shot. BSM does that and makes them pay. Wasting no time at all. It's about as long as they've had the ball out there. Still a lot of time left on the shot clock. Olsen, great anticipation. Cuts off that passing lane, leaves the charge. The, the kick to the corner, step back for the three. Oh, what a play. What thinking by Watkins. Yeah, back to back threes by Watkins, extends this lead to five. They were just down by one. That's the power of the three point shot, Dave. Back to back possessions, they make threes, bang, bang, and all of a sudden they're up by five. Laylar. Open shot. Oh the my other shot. goodness. Taylor Starks comes in, gets another one. Three point difference. What a spark that Taylor Starks provides as a 5'10 freshman off the bench. Gets inserted in the game and buries a three. Olsen had five people around her, and they still get in there and get the rebound. Now there's a battle for it. That's a possession arrow. And that's going to go to. De La Salle. A couple possessions ago, the Islanders are sitting in the zone. Watch the great half court set. They get the ball inside to the free throw line. Right there, Libby Olsen checks her opposite shoulder. Great cross court pass. And Watkins sets her feet, delivers the strike on the three. Very good half court set basketball by Tim Elfson. And the Scarlet, or excuse me, the Red Knights. Let's call them the Scarlet Knights. Going to call a foul on Watkins on that one. And at the free throw line, again, De La Salle will be there. This is 
Madeline Blaylark. And I, we talked about earlier the best percentage of free throw shooters I think I've seen. I'd have to go through them all for the state, but she's not one. She's got to be in the top two. And I was going to say I probably shouldn't have said that before she shot. Almost gave her the old announcers. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Jinx. Well, yeah, five foot eight is a sophomore. You know, great demeanor about her. Coaching staff loves her. They think that she's a, a blossomed leader for this team. Again, as you said, Dave, 88% from the free throw line cuts this lead to one. A lot of time left in this first half. Olsen's been the focal point. It doesn't matter. She still gets the shot off and in. Just a beautiful form, too, Spencer. Yeah, her ability to extend that jump shot and and really shoot it above her head. The fact that she has the strength to be able to do that while thought fading away, whilst on one foot. Tremendous player, really fun to watch. Olsen not only rebounds, she pushes it up herself. Inside might be a foul. In basketball, you don't rise to the occasion, you fall back on your preparation. At Blaze, we want to prepare and be there for our customers. I'm on Team Blaze. Oh. Olivia Olson at the free throw line. She's an 80% shooter as well, talking about talent. Metro West Player of the Year, and also the Metro West Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, she, both McDonald's all America. She can do it all at, at possession. You see her corral the defensive rebound and quite literally push it the full length of the floor and get in the painted area and draw a foul. She can hit shots from the outside. You mentioned her defensive ability. I think she does a great job at the free throw line. At six foot two, holds that follow through, follow through, really good looking stroke. Well, a career leader in steals among many other categories too. So you're right, Spencer. Pretty good defensive player. Inside, kick it to the corner. Let's see what we got out there. Back it up a little bit. Bishop not giving a lot of room. Blaylark. Inside. Good defense. A lot of arms up in the air. Ball out of bounds. That's going to go too. Benil St. Margaret. So Red Knights coming in here. State champs last year back in 2010, 2006. And Tim Ellison's taken over. He got Ellison, he got his first state title last year with this team. Olson, same thing. That time a little shot. And here we go again. There's no rest at all out here. We're going right at it. And then Freely, the freshman, reaches in trying to get the steal. But you got a piece. Yeah, the flow of the game has been indicated by how Benilde St. Margaret's been able to go on the offensive end. When De La Salle's been able to get a stop, BSM struggled getting back on the defensive side of the ball in transition. It's when BSM can score and get back and set their defense do the Islanders have trouble in the half court. Tough shot. Oh, really good defense. Really good de defense that time by Olivia Olson was able to hold her ground after taking the initial brunt of the of, of the offensive player and still I believe got a piece of it. Capture with that rebound off to Friedley and on the board is Ariana Meister and quickly down court wasting zero time get the shot up draw the foul but this pretty physical contest they're just attacking down low. And Benilde St. Margaret's able to string together some stops. Look, great defense, moves her feet. That's the thing. You don't have to sweep down. You don't have to try to block the shot. If you're in a position defensively and you have the offensive player on the opposite side of you, just stay big, make them score over the top, make the, make the shot difficult. Good shot of Coach Ellison, South Dakota State grad. Thirty twenty seven good start to this one keeping it close all the way through the freshman Cindy Freely Freely 11 points a game Bishop they played pretty good D on her so far because she can be explosive as well try the other side Kapsner kicks it back Freely shot is not going to go rebound Benil St. Margaret back to the spot in the corner Bishop picked up the foot. 
As Benoit St. Margaret approaches this 1-2-2, two, two, kind of morphs into a 3-2 zone. They can't get, they can't fall in love with the outside jump shot. They have to continue to attack that zone defense and look for Olivia Olsen in the painted area. They're out to a nice start from the three-point line. Four of nine, but you can't fall in love with that jump shot. Blaylard. Olsen comes out in her little double team ball knocked loose by Friedley. Picked right back up, and now that three-pointer is perfect. Out from the top, Blaylark. She's just got that nice touch, and she has that great accuracy as a shooter. Cross court, open look on the way. Olsen, great hustle to get the rebound and draw the foul. And what is the vulnerable? What's vulnerable in the game of basketball when you're playing a zone defense? You give up an offensive rebound, and now the other end, it's another really good looking stroke by Blaylark. She is feeling it. Only coming in averaging nine points a game, but's had a really good state tournament. 14 points in each of her first two games to get to the state title. We continue to see Olivia Olson live at the free throw line. She is now seven of nine from the stripe. Last four consecutive. Have gone in. The horn sounds. Let's see what's going on here. It's a timeout on the court. 527 to go in this first half. This is Williams Arena, site of two state championship titles so far today. Spencer, this looks like this is going to be a battle right to the end in this one. First of all, you called it. The first two games that we saw in the afternoon session, unbelievable oh, basketball, man. and we're in for another treat here today. De La Salle, Benilde St. Margaret in an absolute tussle right now. We're seeing a McDonald's All-American and Olivia Olsen do her thing. We're seeing an Islanders team that shows a tremendous amount of toughness and grit. They're not going away. Every time... Benilde St. Margaret comes down and they get a bucket. They make a big shot. De La Salle doesn't care. They're going to get the ball and they're going to go the other way and they're going to try to store. Blaylar trying that left side. Go oh, dangerous pass, but a good one got right to the spot. Just attack, attack, attack inside and then turn around. That might have been partially blocked on the battle. Foul. Yeah, this is going to be two shots coming up. Yeah, for great, Jordan Johnson. Great fight by Jordan Johnson and, and stick to itiveness and wherewithal to go up and kind of a loose ball play, a little bit of a, a loose ball rebound, and she goes up and corrals it, that board, and it's an opportunity to earn two at the charity stripe. One rebound away on her average, away from a double double. 12 points and nine boards in game two of the state tournament to get to this coveted title game. 20 points, 8 of 16 from the floor. They're looking for a big effort out of her this evening. And next year, no basketball. It's volleyball at UC Santa Barbara. Open look for three. Watkins shot is going to be rebounded underneath again by Blaylark, who is on a mission. There's a long lead pass and another foul call on that shot, so two more. We talked about it a couple minutes ago, a few possessions ago, and it has not gotten any better for BSM. They're continuing to settle for jump shots, and again, De La Salle has wasted no time. They, they, have, they are the best that I have seen in this tournament at transitioning quickly from defense to offense. That they do not wait for the opposition to set whatsoever. They are gonna go either hunt threes or get high percentage looks in transition. Moses one more time. De La Salle, eight of eight from the free throw line. What do you know, they're up two. Practice those free throws, kids. Moving around, a lot of passing, and great defense are shifting around. Could be tiring him out a little bit on that. Now as he picked up that pivot foot again. Second travel on that. Yeah, this zone, this De La Salle, 1-2-2, two, two. it morphs into a 2-3, or excuse me, a 3-2 zone that James Fassett and his coaching staff in four years have drawn up at De La Salle. And at, at the start of the game, Benilde St. Margaret kind of had it figured out, but it's given them some troubles the last few possessions. And I want to say the last five possessions, BSM has had to settle for an outside jump shot. 
Blocked by Watkins. Ball will go back to the Islanders, the number two seed in the tournament. Number one, of course, has been Ill St. Margaret. It worked out pretty well for all the brackets this year. It always worked that way, especially in this class. Look at the Blaylark. She is just playing a heck of a game, but can't get the ball to drop. And now Olsen will push that up. Turns it into a two on two all the way, coast to coast. And we're going to get another one. Mismatches don't beat you. An open person will. And Olivia Olsen comes up with the rebound, and nobody stops her in transition. Nobody comes over to stop the ball. The ball is what scores. Somebody's got to pick that up. In my opinion, it probably should have been, well, it could have been a multiple multitude of Islanders that were in a position. And Olivia Olsen continues to have a great night, not only overall with 21 points, but she is 9 of 11 from the free throw line. Yeah, the last six in a row, she's hit from the charity stripe on gift tosses. Inside. Good drive by Moses, just not the result she wanted. Into the hands of Olivia Olsen. Bishop eyeing that up, but picked up by Blaylar. Watkins, both of these two of the ball can shoot, and Friedley's got a good looking three, but that time off the side of the rim and chasing it down and almost saving it into the arms of De La Salle. Scott cross court, Blaylark thinking about it. Now you've got an open shot right there, and that is just a little bit too hard. Bishop with the rebound. Bishop, the kick, the open look, Watkins. Presley, that's her third triple. Just how you draw it up, dribble penetration, suck the defense inside, cause the attention to be focused on the ball in the painted area, and a crisp outlet pass for a wide open three in the corner. Look at this, Friedley cutting off the passing lane, extends the lead. De La Salle up by two just a few seconds ago, it seems like. Whitaker Hill. Meister. Johnson underneath. That's going to Benilde. Last few possessions, Benilde St. Margaret. Great dribble drive and a phenomenal kick out. Well, the pass was right on the money a few possessions ago. We have Friedley and her ability to get out active hands in the defensive passing lane. De La Salle's not able to recover in time. Those high percentage looks and transition, those are the buckets that you have to make up for if you're De La Salle. Ooh, what a pass on the inside. Well, the good players are like that, but what's really interesting is Kate Capster knows Olivia so well that she kept looking at her for a pass. Because everybody else thought she's going to go up with that shot. Starks. Ball's kicked. They'll start over on this one. Also, into the ball game is Olivia Olsen. So unselfish with the dribble to the middle. The defense helps up the lane. Great recognition by the McDonald's All American. I'll tell you what, Ann Arbor's getting an absolute star in Olivia Olsen. Watkins. Push it up. Neither one of these teams is going to come up to. Deliberate they want to attack Bishop they're not going to give her room to shoot she can pop it out there. This is Friedley Kapsner Johnson strong board Blaylar She's hit three threes if you're just joining us right away to start this game and Bishop's not giving her room and that almost was a steal, but instead, Maya McNeil turns it into three. Again, another De La Salle bench player coming in and providing a spark. Myla McNeil, four points a game. And a decent tournament, scored in all three games now, but that's a big shot for a bench player as the time winds down in the first. Under a minute to go. 18 on the shot clock. Friedley is open. Oh, down and back out, and look at the hustle by Kapsner. Travel maybe. Go back to this last shot by De La Salle and McNeil. Beautiful. Didn't even keep it in the frame. It was so high. 
Yeah, really good looking three. That was the shot that De La Salle needed. Down eight. They cut it to five with the ball. 40 seconds to go. Trying to gain some momentum going into the halftime locker room. Pick Kapsner. Cross court. Great pass, great steal, and the shot is good. And off the hands of Josie Naji, her first points of this game. Now we're under 30. There's no shot clock here. Let's see what the Islanders try to do. Tri Metro champs with the basketball. Blaylark has it. Cross court deep in that corner. Back out. Open look. Johnson foul. She's going to go to the line. Johnson continues to work relentlessly on that offensive glass for the Islanders. Really having a nice game so far. Six points and six rebounds in 16 minutes of play for the senior. Excuse me, just a junior at six yeah. foot one. Well, yeah, because you see that commitment to, to play, right, play volleyball. volleyball you, yeah. Yeah. So early commitment. I don't know, Spencer, that's really a good subject, too. Early commitment is easier if you're a player that you know what you're going to do. I can only draw from my own experience, committed right here to play on this floor my sophomore year of high school. I thought it was a blessing just to be able to go out and play and not have any of the distractions. At the buzzer, not going to go. And so a good first half. Benil St. Margaret's will take a five-point lead into the conversations in the locker room here. Some of the action from half number one. We'll talk about it next with Chris. I keep them every year in case I get Halftime of the class 3A state championship game. Benilde St. Margaret's the defending champions. Five up on De La Salle. The one seed and the two seed, all four of our championship games today. Chris Long back here along with Marissa Kate. That was an entertaining half of basketball. Back and forth action. Benilde would build a lead. De La Salle would chew into a little bit, but then Benilde kept pulling back away. Both teams love to score in transition. They also love to shoot the three-point. That's what makes for a super entertaining first half. And Olivia Olsen, as advertised, a fantastic first half. 21.6 rebounds and four assists in that first half. I've been really impressed with Olivia Olsen. Not only her offense, but her defensive presence. She's everywhere for them on the defensive end, making it really difficult for the Islanders to get anything underneath the basket. Yeah, Benilde St. Margaret's looking pretty good. Up to that five-point lead, Olivia Olsen. Boy, what a tournament she has had. 35 points in the quarters, 32 in the semis, and on pace maybe for 42 tonight. But De La Salle got some players of their own. Madeline Blaylark hitting some threes here. Sophomore Madeline Blaylark came out ready to play the left-handed three-point shooter. And their big gun, Anisha Scott, getting some things done. I mean, the ball fake there is amazing. Even I fell for that ball <laughs> fake. <laughs> Almost fell out of the chair. On the other side, BSM distributing the ball well. Presley Watkins, the recipient of some great dimes here. Benilde St. Margaret's does a great job of sharing the basketball. They're so unselfish with the basketball. As you can see by these highlights, everyone getting a touch. And we mentioned Olivia Olsen, the great first half. She had just so many different weapons at her disposal. She does. She loves that spin move. I think she uses it to get a feel for where the defense is, but so successful with that. That shot is just so hard to make. This one relatively easy, but still the left-handed scoop as she leads with a game-high 21. The stats brought to you all tournament long by Raising Kane's Chicken Fingers, freshly made and constantly craved. Both teams having a good first half behind the three-point line. I'd like to see De La Salle convert a little bit more in transition. Can De La Salle go back to, or excuse me, Benilde St. Margaret's go back to back, or will De La Salle spoil the party and win their fifth state title? We're going to find out in the second half next. Time for another championship look back brought to you by Old Dutch Foods. And here we go to last year's state champs, Benilde St. Margaret, in their 66 60 victory. And again, what's interesting is you see a lot of the players out here on the court right now that you saw last year. They only had one starter that graduated, but she was a good one. Sierra Lumpkin had a super game in that championship game, had 21 points. And Sierra's in college now, but otherwise you see a lot of these same faces here, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and, and one that remains consistent from last year to this year, Olivia Olson, 21 points, just a tremendous first half, six of 10 from the floor. What you love to see is that she converted from the free throw line, nine of 11 from the stripe, six rebounds, four assists. 
Yeah, she's really the heart and soul of this team. So disruptive on the offensive end. Puts fall pressure on the opposition around the rim. Contest shots. Our look right there. The Lyuna leading scorers. Build your future with Lyuna. Visit LyunaMinnesota.org. Olsen out of bounds. Back to De La Salle trailing by five. As we start half number two, it was a really fun first half. Spencer back and forth, well played. And Olsen came out just smoking right away. Yeah, she came out on fire, had 15 points in the blink of an eye. Of course, she had 21 in the first half. Here's what Benilde St. Margaret needs to be cognizant of. We see him come out in the second half and shoot a wide open three. They can't settle for that shot. If they come out and take 13, 14 open threes and settle for that, they might be in trouble. They have to continue to attack this zone, get the ball inside. That's got to be a foul. Rebound, Olsen. Oh, it's a tough job, but they missed that one. Freely. Oh, she got wide open. Look at that. Just glided to the basket. She's got seven. And that time, De La Salle, poor transition defense, got caught up in complaining on, to the official on the foul call. Benilde St. Margaret makes the most of that. You go all the way uncontested to lay it in. Open look from the corner. Nails it. And Moses has point number eight. Tremendous ball movement, that possession in the half court by De La Salle against the Benilde St. Margaret zone. Watkins to the corner. Kate Capture, she's got an open 15 footer, and the southpaw puts it in. Yeah, that time found a little bit of the weakness in that zone and dribbled up right to the free throw line. And you called it so eloquently, Dave. She was left wide open and buried the jumper. Scott Blaylark, strong first half. Nothing in the interior. Moses looking it up down low. And then they're going to toss it away, so that'll be. Been old St. Margaret's basketball after that turnover, cutting off the passing lanes. Saw it to Look start the, the game. Yeah, the bench is loving it. The five on the floor feed from the 15 on the bench, and we saw it to start the game. Been old St. Margaret did a great job of trapping as soon as the ball crossed the half court line. They got away from it a little bit. Boy, good defense, almost knocked to loose Olsen. Just can't hang on to it in traffic again. Johnson got her hand on it. Now there's a scramble for it. Still a scramble. Let them play, and they do. And it's De LaSalle's ball. Scott, stop, pop. Timeout. Five point difference. Well, she had hands all over there, right? I mean, she gets the ball inside. Olsen does, and three players collapsing on her. Look at that. Yeah, active hands by the Islanders in the half court. It's a bit of a scrum, and De La Salle wastes no time again. They're so quick in transition. Nobody stops the ball, and Scott's able to recognize that and pull up for the jump shot. This is when De La Salle has been able to, to go on their run, when they muck it up, when they make the game ugly, when they're not... When they don't allow Benilde St. Margaret to slow it down in the half court and get the ball to Olsen, when De La Salle is able to generate some turnovers and speed the game up, that plays in their favor. What do you think Coach Fassett is telling his squad? Just, just that. Keep up the defensive intensity and keep up the pressure. Um, they were able to generate that turnover because, you, like you said, Dave, they put three defenders around Olsen with active hands, and she coughed it up. And then when they're when they do that, they're able to to generate points off of those turnovers. They again, they waste no time in transitioning quickly from defense to offense. For some of our patients, the goal is winning a national championship, but you just want to skate for state. At Trio Orthopedics, we'll treat your wrist and get you back on the ice. Class 3A championship game coming to you from Williams Arena, where we have another one right after this. 4A, they're starting to fill in as well. For Ooh, it's going to be a Hopkins. good one, Dave. It really is shapes. It, they split during the year. Yeah, we had the call on Thursday night to see both those teams to get to that 4A title game. I'm really looking forward. Some star-studded talent on the floor in that one as well. Friedley to Olsen. Olsen with the dribble and the short jumper. And on the rebound, Johnson has it tipped away momentarily. Now picked off by Watkins. The lead pass to Kapsner. Dishes back, but she's fouled. Looks like Moses, the freshman, will be 
getting a fall, but boy, that was a flurry of activity under the bucket and ends up in the hands of the Benilde St. Margaret Red Knights against these Islanders of De La Salle, not too far apart from one another as far as location is concerned. delicate balance in the half court. You have to take what the defense gives you, but they're sagging off for a reason. De La Salle is almost trying to bait Benilde St. Margaret into, into nulling to sleep, into falling to some of those jump shots. Again, another fadeaway 12-footer. Benilde St. Margaret has yet to attack the basket in the second half. Scott, it's going to count. Yeah, and unlike BSM has done, De La Salle does the exact opposite. Yet again, they come up with a loose ball rebound, and it's Anisha Scott with the hesitation dribble, getting all the way to the basket, trying to earn three the hard way. And she's, she really makes them go. The junior point guard averaging 18 points a game, did a good job of keeping the defender on her hip, and she converts at the free throw line, and now Benilde St. Margaret's lead is cut just to two. Friedley. Against Blaylark out on top, setting the offense. And Olsen is pushed back about a foot or two. <laughs> That's the game, Create right? the it's, space, it's right? Physical, absolutely. And then the high pass on the other side to Bishop. What a pass by Friedley. Bishop goes down hard, and she is hurt. Meanwhile, play continues on the other end. Bishop just getting up and limping her way back down the court. Inside and Bishop gets back in time to cut off the passing lane, knock it out of bounds, but she's going to go to the bench. She was waving for somebody to come in after a great play into the basket. Yeah, good pass, but an even better catch by Bishop. Contorted her body in a position to try to go up and get that one. I don't know if she tweaked her leg or knee on the way down, but a tremendous acrobatic finish. And that ball is going to be over. Oh, wow. Could have let that go and it would have been their basketball, but as it turns out, it's a jump ball. It's going to go back to De La Salle. Head coach James Fassett in his fourth year with the Islanders. Not only a tremendous boys program, but the girls program. It's done such great things. 13 state tournament appearances with four titles in search of their fifth today. Tremendous culture there on the island. Scott, how about that shot clock? I thought she was going to pop it up there at the end. We have not hardly, I think that's the third one I've seen on a violation this year. Yeah, honestly, this honestly, it fooled me. I, I wasn't paying attention to that either. And it almost appeared as though De La Salle got caught in the rut of maybe just losing your eye. They just didn't seem to, to notice that the clock was running down. Olsen is on that high post. Look at that battle down there, Spencer. That is, there's a lot of physicality taking place. Kapschner. Little jam, traffic jam in that corner. Cross court pass. And the open look. Not going to go. Rebound. Olsen has it. She's going to hit the floor. And there's a foul call. What is it? I'm not sure what they called. It could have, I believe they're going to get Olsen for an over the back. I believe that is the call. That's her third, too. De La Salle has Blaylark and, uh, and Maester in trouble. Tim Ellison, three. the head coach of BSM, can't believe it. His star player just picked up her third with 13 to go. Johnson back to Scott. Jordan Allen on that high post. Cross court pass. We've seen a few of those in this game. Now, Presley, let's see how. Fast, she pushes it down all the way into the basket. Tough shot, got it, and drew the fall. Wow, kissed the glass from a bit of a distance there. And great body control. Tried the old inside-out dribble just to create enough hesitation and initiates the contact. In my opinion, that's really good, really good defense by Anisha Scott, keeping her hands behind her shoulders. That said, it was a difficult shot. 
by Watkins. Ooh, and she finishes the three-point play the hard way. That's a big turn of events. That's a big swing right there. 53-46. This game's been back and forth the whole time. Aaron pass, turnover. That'll go back to the Red Knights. State champs last year, as we mentioned. We just saw that video of that a few moments ago. Closest game in sectionals was 19 points. And the closest game for De La Salle coming out of the section was 13 points. So not tested in the section too much. No, both teams able to get to the tournament pretty comfortably. Really had a, 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 a somewhat of an easy path to get to this point. That's another really good looking shot by Bishop, the five foot 11 junior. Really good with that mid range pull up. No hesitation with the dribble drive to create the space to knock down the 15 footer. And with the steal, Bishop, the lead pass. And the runner is Freely up. And Sydney Freely, the freshman, the recipient of a great assist. And more importantly, puts her team up by 11 points now. Biggest lead of the game for Benilde St. Margaret's. The play of the game brought to you by Minnesota Rusco and companies. They're your hometown remodeler. Bishop able to jump the passing lane. Great, create that steal and finds her teammate in Freely in a beautiful one handed push pass in stride one dribble it's all it's needed to gather herself and explode up to the rim and finish that in transition mini ha ha or excuse me but St. Margaret a little bit of a run right now. Yeah it's a 9 0 run in the last 247 Spencer so they are on a streak but this game has gone back and forth. De La Salle will attack Moses a shot off balance oh, Olsen on the board Bishop thousand point scorer. All-conference, first-team All-State. Islanders. Blaylock doing a lot of the ball handling coming up as well. That's Moses. Backing it up, kind of working around this perimeter, seeing what they can get to open up. Olsen down there. She's got three fouls, and she's playing tough defense, and Kapsner knocks it loose momentarily. They're not giving them room to shoot. They were going to attack Olsen. No, they'll kick it to the corner and take that three. And Olivia way up in the air to grab that one. Bishop. Guarded by Moses. Friedley. This is Kapsner. Olsen. Trying to draw the charge, doesn't work, and then the rebound held on by Bishop under the bucket, and she won't get it. How about one more time? Friedley has it. That's up for grabs and right into the hands of Ariana Meister. And she will push it up off of a foot. How in the heck did she get that out? What a pass by Bishop to control that enough to lead Presley Watkins. Tremendous effort by Bishop to be the first one on the floor to go get that loose ball. And again, she does a great job of looking up the floor that time to find her teammate in Watkins. Blaylark down to the corner to look in the middle again for Maester back out on top. Blaylark pretty deliberate on this offense right now. And then to the baseline, and Olsen just stood there, put her arms up, and got the steal. Bishop now is going to be fouled. Let's go back to the the turnover. And Bishop getting on the floor for the loose ball and then <laughs> finds it from her backside to her teammate and Watkins for the lay-in. Love to see that energy and effort, the tenacity. The I'm telling you, the first one on the ground for the loose ball typically is the one that's going to come up with it. Be the first one to hit the floor. Bishop weaving her way to the basket. Yeah, the first half, it was all Olsen, and Bishop has really been a nice compliment to Olsen here in the second half, really starting to find her way in rhythm. Danilde St. Hill. Margaret sits down in this 2-3 zone, really provides a lot of troubles with their length. And they are one and done for the most part as De La Salle, DSM, Doing a pretty good job of rebounding out of that zone. Good save by Olsen. Kapsner kicked to the corner. Watkins lines it up. Too much. 
in the backcourt. Crossing in time. Blaylark. Now she's going to attack. Tough shot. Friedley. Bishop. Kapsner to the hoop. Kate Kapsner. That yeah, was set up so well by Bishop. So unselfish here in the second half. Not only scoring her own points, but dishing to her teammates sharing the sugar. I think she's got three assists in a row. Well, all of a sudden it's a 63-46 game like that. On the drive again, not really getting good shots either, Spencer. Everything's contested so far for De La Salle in the second half. At halftime, it was a 44-39 game. I'm very impressed by Benilde St. Margaret's 2-3 zone defense here in the second half. They've, they've decided to extend it. They're using their length and their athleticism to really take away the dribble drive lanes by the Islanders. And it's, it's provided difficulties for De La Salle to find any sort of rhythm in their half court. All their buckets are coming in transition or their secondary break. When they're forced to play half court offense, Benilde St. Margaret can sit down and guard. De La Salle has not had a field goal for six and a half minutes. Whitaker Hill down low and Scott will change that. Anisha Scott. They find the weak part or the soft part of that 2 3 zone with a beautiful bounce pass to the Big Ten logo. And Scott, zero hesitations, able to knock down that jumper. Travel, you know, there and there's a she's a difference maker. We, we've seen yeah. that. Scott is, and she's got four falls. So you're wondering where the heck was she? She was, she's playing right now with four personal fouls. So that's why they were. Coach Fassett was holding her out a little bit, obviously. For she's perfect on the night, literally perfect. Five of five from the floor, one of one from three, and she's one of one from the charity stripe. Get her the ball. There she is. Good dribble, good control. Then loses it into the hands of Mira Wismer into the ball game for Tim Ellison's Red Knights. Friedley, the freshman. Wismer. She's just a sophomore. She saw a little opening. Good run to the bucket. Not the finish she would hope for. Quickly down. This is how they started the game. Still can't get it to drop. Bishop going to break two on two right here. She'll stop and pop. No, she'll get the ball knocked loose. Scramble. That's a possession arrow. Let's see. And that'll go back to the Red Knights. De La Salle is running out of time. They are, they're in a position now where they not only do they have to start to string together some stops on the defensive end, but they got to look to get some shots up early. Being down 15 that they are with only seven minutes to go, you need to generate some points on the offensive end. Out on top. Yeah, Olsen was out for just a minute. Head coach Tim Ellison couldn't leave his McDonald's All-American on the bench too long in the state tournament. And yet they managed without her that time too, didn't they? They did. They really put on a nice run here, but De La Salle can strike quickly, and Scott is a good one to do it. And that one will roll off the edge of the rim for her. And she's being careful, obviously, with those four personals right now. Wismer. Losing the dribble almost. Bishop there to help her. Olsen sees something on the baseline and the left handed layup is beauty. That's, you know, that's Olivia's first bucket in half number two. And she hasn't had to do a whole bunch. Her teammates have really stepped up, Bishop included. But what a dribble drive by Olivia Olsen and a beautiful reverse left handed layup. Scott's going to be fouled from behind by Wismer. Let's go back to the other end. Beautiful rip through dribble drive as she tiptoes the baseline. And how about that? The left handed reverse. A very talented player again. Off to Ann Arbor. She's going to play next year for the Wolverines in the Big Ten. Six foot two senior, averages 25 points a game, does Olivia Olson. State tournament, state title run last year. Well, she's just fluid too, isn't she? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it, at six two. I think, I mean, obviously, she's not an underrated defender given her awards and accolades. 
that she's won on that side of the ball this year. But not only does she come up with a lot of block shots, but her size and her length just alter so many dribble drives to the basket. Maybe she doesn't get credited with a block shot every time, but she's going to make the opposition think about twice, think twice about headed in there. Red Knights with a big lead here of 16 points. Largest of the game. Good fake by Bishop. She's going to go to the basket and she gets it. And they're firing pretty much in all cylinders right now. They really are. They've come out extremely focused with a focused effort in the second half. Not only on the defensive end, I was a little bit cautious with the, with a couple of quick, settled jump shots they took to start the second half, but they did a great job of adjusting and attacking the basket with the dribble drive. It's very apparent here in the last few minutes. De La Salle has had a difficult time containing the dribble drive of Benilde St. Margaret. Najee in the game. Olsen looking to dish it off to Najee. Looking for a position. Good defense on her right now. It's a nice little battle going on there at the top. Friedley breaking along the baseline. High pass. Olsen the spinner. The jumper goes down hard. And uh, no whistle, the ball goes out of bounds. It'll go back to De La Salle. Bishop's been big here in the second half. A little dribble drive. The Red Knights running a little bit of a weave action. She's going to knock down the open jump shot in the corner with the drive to the basket. It's all the Red Knights here in half number two. 44 39. Spencer and I were just chatting off. Uh, during half or during the time out there that it was 44 39 at halftime but they right now uh, BSM is on a 19 three run Spencer. Yeah 19 to three they're, they're really spreading it around they've you know, been able St. Margaret comes in just a buzzsaw they've won 22 games in a row and this second half I think we're starting to get a flavor of what a team they really are and how they can really spread it around and score all over the floor. Johnson shot. The battle for it. Scott has it. She's really the only one that's been scoring yeah. for him right now. And yeah, she's playing with four fouls. Anisha Scott, uh, just tremendous effort, not only here in the second half, but throughout the entirety of the game. Six of eight from the floor. She's got a team high 15 points. They're going to weave it out on the top. Scott has the last 10 points for De La Salle. Corner, open look, Kapsner nails it. Tremendous ball movement in the half court by Benilde St. Margaret, running a little bit of a dribble weave to burn some clock. And De La Salle responds quickly with Blaylark with an open three in transition. And they haven't seen an open shot like no. that in a while. Friedley. Presley Watkins. Been very consistent in this tournament. Ball is off the foot, and that's going to be an over and back. Yeah, the Benilde St. Margaret faithful and Watkins doesn't like the call, but I agree with the official. It was a bit of a scrum, but it was indeed off their foot. And Tim Elfson and this Islanders team, there's no no quit in these girls. Down 16. Someone hanging around though. They're they're not going to go away lightly. I'm going to keep battling. Underneath series of passes, maybe one too many there. Right idea. Just couldn't get it to Jordan like they wanted to. And I will say, Benil's done a heck of a job. I like Jordan Johnson a lot. The yeah. second half, they've managed to keep her from scoring. And she, when she's on, she's a big factor. Slowly bringing the ball up. Got the clock down to about three and a half minutes right now. Watkins is going to pop the three. And they just hit it over to Olsen. Freely, what a nice job. Yeah, Olsen. And what's the old saying? I think it was Lee Trevino. The, the better you are, the lucky you are. And Olivia Olsen, just in the lucky place, right place, right time to have the ball bounce right in her basket. And she's able to go right up and finish the uncontested lay in. I, would, I yeah. wouldn't know anything about being lucky on the golf course. Play with Dave Lee, most lucky guy out there. And the Olsen on the follow, Friedley and a whistle. That stopped. Then, you know, we we're talking about the way Friedley slapped that ball back to her teammate, and we talked about the Rudy Gobert effect. That's kind of his deal. 
Yeah, but you watch that replay. So Freely not only tipped the ball to her teammate, but she used her body to almost create a, a lane for Olsen to take it all the way to the basket. Olivia Olsen continues her hot streak at the free throw line, 10 of 12. Benilde St. Margaret, 11 of 13, 85% from the stripe. They come into this game, Dave, shooting only 68% from the from the foul line. So that's a that's quite an improvement. Scott. And she gets right to her spot and won't get that one to fall and that's bouncing around like a volleyball match down there. Finally hauled down and deep in the corner Scott with that little head fake trying to get a shot off covered up. And this is uh, boy down and back out man. Hey a quick shout out if I can to one of our regular camera Please. operators Jimmy Schmidt. He's under the weather. He's not here today. We all want you to get better Jim and we think he's been on these tourneys since they needed a ladder after each time the ball went into the peach basket. So you need to get back here. <laughs> we need that experience. I, I heard you refer to him as a waiter at the Last Supper. So I don't uh, peach basket Last yeah, Supper. I don't know. It's been it's been around. We're thinking about you, Jimmy. We'll see you next week, hopefully, at the ba the Boys State Tournament, huh? Yeah, that'd be great. No, drive inside by Meister, and timeout is called. With 1.59 to go in the game, Benil St. Margaret just opened it up in the second half, and they got this big 21-point lead now, and this game looked like it was going to be back and forth the entire game watching the first half. Yeah, complete team effort by Benil St. Margaret. You can tell their community has come out in full force here this evening to support their girls to what looks like they're going to hold on for a repeat of their state tournament. Now, Tim Ellefson, the head coach of the Red Knights, is, you know, it's never over till it's over. The fat lady's not singing quite yet, so there's still plenty of time on the clock, and he's trying to instill in his girls right now that plenty of time. We need to continue to stay focused while there's still time on the clock and then we can go celebrate in search of his and he's only been there two years Dave and what a great way to start that'd be a birdie birdie start right back to back state titles I like this the officials made him go back to their huddle you came out too early <laughs> how about that such a great tradition and program there not only again on the girls side but also the boys side lost an absolute heartbreaker two nights ago my former teammate the head coach of the boys Benilde St. Margaret team double overtime lost at the buzzer mm. half quarter oh that was an incredible finish yeah. against Orno yep wow yeah that uh, that highlight film is going to be around a long yeah, it made, time it made it all over the airways under two minutes Bishop Kapsner, Watkins, Olsen, everybody touching it right now, trying to work that shot clock down as far as they can with this big lead for the state title. And a timeout called with 17 on the shot clock, 141 on the game clock. Yeah, and head coach Tim Ellefson has no problem with taking that timeout, running 17 seconds off the shot clock. At this point, it, it, it's just trying to get through the clock. Well, this was earlier today in the 1A championship game. It was a good one. 70 to 65 was the final. The good you wins it. Probably got the party going on right now at Dar's Cafe down there, Dar's Bar, rather. And great effort. And they're the state champions. They've been there before. That's Elizabeth Gady. And man, did she prove to be one of the finest players in the state. And somebody at Minnesota State, Mankato, had the foresight to sign her. But it was a big victory for them. And a great day for all the folks down in beautiful good view where the parents made a bunch of signs they headed in the middle of town and had some other things set up and once the tournament started I mean the first tournament game not in the state but along the way and they were out there with all those and went home today with a state championship trophy beat a good team too by the way Olsen on the double team as mountain iron Buell that was a great game right up until the end. And at the buzzer, it counts. When it's your night, it is your night. Benilde St. Margaret, enjoy the last minute and 15 seconds after that one. Bishop. I'm going to get a trap over here in the foul, and she'll go to the free. Well, let's see. Yeah, should be a bonus, isn't it? No. Nope. Give me an opportunity. No, not yet. Not yet. 
Look at this. Well, they needed all. Yeah. <laughs> They needed all 30 seconds of it, didn't they? It was like a game winner. Now, is that a pass or a shot? Do you give her an assist? I think that goes down as an official assist in the books. I'd be begging for that after yeah, game. Yeah, you would. <laughs> there she goes out of her final high school basketball game. Huge hug with Coach Ellison. I look at Olivia's like, she's not letting go. No, a tremendous high school career, back-to-back -back state titles. And she's going to have a lot of fun next season in Ann Arbor playing in the Big Ten. So that's a violation. Good defense on the throw in. So De La Salle will get the ball back. There she is, uh, player of the year, McDonald's All American. Every championship team has a certain moxie and a certain makeup about them. And you can tell, and not to insinuate that the runners up don't have that either because to get to this level and to get, make it as far as either of these teams have you have to have a great chemistry and a great culture but there's something about yeah there's something about we see Zahara Bishop and what a tremendous second half and a tremendous game that she had more than likely will be back here next year and only her junior year at Benilde St. Margaret but there's Johnson. something about the culture and the moxie and makeup of a championship team and you can see it consistently through Goodhue, Providence Academy, with this Benil St. Margaret squad. I'm excited to see who comes out on top in just a few minutes here in the next one, Dave. Oh, boy, I don't know. That could go either way. Nice crowd filling in for that Minnetonka Hopkins game coming up next. That crowd in game two today was unbelievable. I bet everybody's got a sore throat right now after that. <laughs> You were sitting right up there in the midst of that. Yeah, I was right in the middle of it. Me and Long are up there enjoying the the battle that that came out in that game too. Leave it up to Madden Greenway to win her. And how about these? The emptying of the bench is always another great tradition and a great moment yeah. in the state tournament. Having everybody have their opportunity, even though they don't get a chance to play. But they didn't get a chance to play in the significant minutes. These girls work very hard. A lot of them play JV. They're working just as hard as the starters in practice. It's important to reward them as well. Watkins. Yeah, what a season for these guys. That's hard. That's hard. You can see the emotions. Not much more to say. That says it all right there. But yeah, I, you know, a while down the road, you realize what a great year you had. But it's frustrating right now. In the meantime, underneath the shot put up by Maya McNeil. And the ball in the hands of Presley Watkins, the freshman, clocked down to 15. Look at her ball, the way that she can handle that basketball. Off the foot, and that's going to be off the defense, so they had to retrieve that. Good play by Wismer to go back there and grab it. And there's a foul and Watkins will go to the free throw line. Foul by Jordan. One point four seconds away. Watkins who averages nine a game did a lot better than that tonight. Yeah they're they are and we'll have the ceremony for you then and then uh, our buddy Chris Long who is great to work with on these tournaments and he will be up there with our good friend Marissa is coming off the analyst role going back up stairs between games we're looking forward to that there's Presley Watkins 17 points in this game for the nine point average that's you want to do it in the state championship don't you the BSM bench is getting ready to run out of their shoes they can't wait to celebrate with their teammates and their back to back state titles. And you know, Zaida Jenkins gets out on the court. And there's the pass in. There's the clock. And we've got a state championship returning to the trophy case at Benilde St. Margaret's. A convincing 81 to 58 victory. I can give you that halftime score it was 44 to 39. It tells you what kind of second half they played. Yeah, Benilde St. Margaret really came out, played a, a, an efficient second half. Despite a couple of early possessions and settling for jump shots, they understood what it was going to take to get the job done. They attacked the basket. At the end of the day, I think Benilde St. Margaret's length and athleticism on the defensive end 
but also their ability to to put the ball on the floor and attack with the dribble drive. It was just too much for the Islanders to try to contain that bounce. But ultimately, I think it was the size and the athleticism by the Red Knights that ultimately took over and won them the game. Let's check out our prime performance brought to you by Giants Ridge. Make giant memories. Look at those numbers, Spencer. Yeah, just a little 30 and 13 for Olivia Olsen in the state title to cap off an unbelievable state tournament for her. Game one, 35 points. Game two, 32 points. Again, another 30-point effort by Olivia Olsen in the state tournament. Yeah, go ahead and celebrate, girls. You've earned it. We're going to have the award ceremony coming up here in uh, just a minute in this game. And then we got one left, Minnetonka and Hopkins right after that. Always tough for the runner up to come out of here and get these awards, but it had a heck of a run. Yeah, really good game of basketball. The first half was was really tightly contested. Anisha Scott kept the Islanders in it. And then it was just too much in the second half. Again, Benilde St. Margaret attacked the basket, shot a high percentage from the from the floor and also made their free throws. Let's go courtside for the awards presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to begin our award ceremony. At this time, we will present the True Stone Financial Credit Union and Delta Dental All-Tournament Team chosen by members of the Girls Basketball Coaches Association. These students have distinguished themselves by their athletic leadership, team commitment, and exceptional sportsmanship. Presenting the awards are John Howe from Delta Dental and Eric Martins, Executive Director of the Minnesota State High School League. And now the 2024 Class 3A Girls Basketball All-Tournament Team. From St. Peter, Ryan Holmgren. From Alexandria area, Macy Lineau. From Alexandria area, number three, Hadley Toole. From De La Salle, Madeline Blaylark. From De La Salle, Jordan Johnson. From De La Salle, Anisha Scott. From Benilde, St. Margaret's, Presley Watkins. From Benilde, St. Margaret's, Kate Kapsner. From Benilde St. Margaret's, Zahara Bishop. And from Benilde St. Margaret's, Olivia Olson. Congratulations to all members of the 2024 Minnesota State High School League All-Tournament Team. In tournament action earlier today, the fourth place trophy was awarded to Stewartville High School. And the third place trophy and bronze medals was awarded to Alexandria Area High School. The winner of the consolation bracket was St. Peter. Congratulations to all Class 3A teams competing in this tournament. Second place medals and presentation will take place at now right now these awards will be presented by members of the league board of directors they are Don Ingebrigtsen Bill Tower Jake Tim Christy Peterson and Leroy Fairbanks they will be assisted by Lisa Quednow associate director of the league and tournament director silver medals and the second place trophy will be awarded to De La Salle High School Please step forward as your name is called. Number one, Clara Stevens. Number two, Aaliyah Johnson. 
Number three, Kaya Williams. Number five, Naomi Whitaker Hill. Number 10, Taylor Starks. Number 11, Maya McNeil. Number 12, Anisha Scott. Number 15, Anaya Stroder. Number 20, Michaela Rivers. Number 21, Samira Taylor. Number 22, Layla Moses. Number 23, Madeline Blaylark. Number 24, Ariana Meister. Number 30, Dylan Tubbs. Thank you. Number 32, Belin Samuel. And number 50, Jordan Johnson. <laughs> Student manager, Amaya Drummond. <laughs> Assistant coaches, Deontay Mashad. <laughs> and assistant coach, Derwin George. and the head coach of the De La Salle Islanders, James Fassett. And now will the captains of the De La Salle Islanders please come forward to receive your second place trophy. The 2024 Minnesota State High School Class 3A Girls Basketball Champion is Benilde St. Margaret's High School. The gold medals will be presented to each team member. Please step forward as your name is called. Number zero, Harper Stevenson Schimmick. Number one, Olivia Olson. Number two, Zeta Jenkins. Number four, Sydney Creedley. Number five, Zahara Bishop. Number 10, Bella Yakub. Number 11, Bella Stevenson Shimmick. Number 12, Sailor Friedley. Number 13, Presley Watkins. Number 14, Mirabelle Wismer. Number 20, Sammy Guerin. Number 21, Ada Parker. Number 22, Audrey Pohl. Number 23, Ellie Porish. Number 25, Ashley Scram. Number 30, Kendall McGee. Number 33, Kate Kapsner. Number 35, Josie Naji. <laughs> Student manager, Aspen Franklin. <laughs> Student manager, Katie Meyer. <laughs> Assistant coaches, Seth Potter. And a Judah Allwall. Thank you. Yeah. 
and the head coach of the Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights, Tim Ellison. And now the captains of Benilde St. Margaret's, the 2024 Minnesota State High School Class 3A Championship Girls Basketball Team, please come forward to receive your championship trophy. What's interesting, Spencer, is I believe the De La Salle, the first time they played this year, beat Benilde St. Margaret's 78-65. It's since that time, Benilde St. Margaret's has rattled, rattled off 23 consecutive victories. Yeah, it, you know, doing the prep work in anticipation for this game, their head coach and Tim Elfson said that that was the turning point in their season. They rallied around that opportunity after that loss, everybody looked each other in the locker room, everybody looked at each other in the mirror and said, we need to be better. That was the turning point of their season. And they were able to capitalize on that. To your point, Dave, 23 wins in a row, if you count this one, 22 wins coming into this game, uh, a complete team effort. I was very impressed by not only the way Olivia Olson got the game started, and, and the way that she was able to insert herself offensively. But they went into the halftime locker room and this thing was pretty close. And it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Benilde St. Margaret did a, did a great job in the second half of attacking the basket and playing great lockdown defense, eliminating De La Salle to only one shot. They were grabbing the defensive rebound, a tremendous team effort. Yeah, go ahead and party, girls. You deserve it. There they are. All smiles. I'm listening to their who's getting a shout out. Yeah, a couple of the shout outs. Yeah, it it well, takes a village, you know. It, it, well. It's not just the girls on the team, and it's not just the managers, and it's not just the coaches, but it, it's the parents, it's the volunteer staff. Um, it, it, it truly does. It's the training staff, the floor it, it, sweepers. It does take a village to 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 allow a team the opportunity to flourish like the Red Knights did here this evening. I remember as a little kid, you had a chance to be a, a, a floor sweeper once in a while. You take half that. Time, oh, yeah. It's like you're part of the squad. I know. Yeah, my kid a... can't wait to hopefully come <laughs> yeah. down and rebound for the Gophers someday just to be a part of it. Yeah. So, it, you know, this Benilde St. Margaret culture they they embrace the the village type of mentality they lean into one another um, and it's done nothing but lead to back-to-back -to -back state tournament titles at BSM well it's a great victory for Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights and a, a really strong second half and a big reason for that is number five Zahara Bishop a state champion again Zahara congratulations to you thank you let's tell me about uh, tell us all about if you would the halftime locker room talk because it was 44 39 at halftime and in the second half you guys just dominated uh, yeah so in the locker room Tim was telling us we have to give it all this um, do this out we knew coming out that they were going to give it all to lock us up and their goal was to stop live and they tried to, but we also have other players that are also good. So we plan to just play good, play our heart outs, and do whatever we can to win. And that's what we did. Zahara, a tremendous effort by you individually, but also your team. Congratulations on this victory. Back-to-back -back state champions. I have to ask, what was your and the team's expectations coming into this season fresh off a state title? So our last season was like, um, just playing defense mainly because in, in regular season we didn't have live sadly but we needed to work on our defense and even though in that game we didn't um, score well nor play defense as much as we could in this game we came out knowing that we need to play defense and we did and then for me you know um, I'm usually in foul trouble most of the time which is like <laughs> hard but coming into the second half I knew that I had to keep my hands up and just play defense and give it my all and then also just go for the ball and then pass it up. We're here with Zakara Bishop 
5'11 junior, back-to-back -back state champion. Zahara, you mentioned Liv Olsen a few times in our in our conversation now. What has it meant to you to be able to play alongside Liv and win back-to-back -back state titles with her? It's amazing. Liv is a great person. She deserves it so much. She. I can't even explain how much she works hard at everything she does. She does everything outside of practice and just, she's like best, best teammate ever. I know that for sure. Zahara, you go in and celebrate with those teammates of yours. I'm sure they can't wait to see you. Thanks for joining us. Congrats on another state championship and good luck again next year. Thank you. Zahara Bishop, the 5'11 junior, joining us here on the postgame show. That's who she was just talking about, her buddy Liv. Olivia Olson. Next time we see her, she'll be in a Michigan uniform in the Big Ten next year. Time out right now. Chris and Marissa are coming up next on 45 TV. Back-to-back -back champions in Class 3A, Benil St. Margaret's the Red Knights win 81-58 over De La Salle. Chris Long back with you along with Marissa Kate. De La Salle took a lead with about four minutes left in the first half, Marissa. They went cold at the end of the first half, but Old St. Margaret's grabbed the momentum and from there ran away with the basketball game. De La Salle had a tough second half. It felt like that the end of the first half just kind of took the wind out of their sails and they weren't able to recover. We should give some credit to Benilde St. Margaret's, though. They executed a wonderful game plan. What a great, complete team. When you look at their starting five, it's almost like they all have roles and they know their roles so well. And on that starting five, Olivia Olsen, the only senior, she didn't score a point in that second half as they pulled away. They didn't need their star player to help ice the championship. That's a credit to everybody that was on the floor. It is. Olivia Olsen came out firing the start of the game, and then it was almost like she was like, okay, guys, I set the tempo and the pace. Now you guys go do what I know you can do. She kind of let her, the rest of her team star in that second half. And that is a formula that gets you a back-to-back -back state championship. De La Salle got some great players, and they were trying to hang around. And Aisha Scott, we saw so much from here, her, the junior this year especially here at the state tournament. She had a great season. She's a thousand point scorer. It's always tough to end your season on a loss, but hats off to the De La Salle Islanders. Islanders, fantastic season for them. Sydney Friedley had a terrific game. She's been not relied upon to be a big scorer. 11 points per game, but man, she had some big buckets. And the presence of mind to be ready for the heave at the shot clock buzzer put back was huge. I love it. As a freshman, to know to do that is just fantastic. Zahara Bishop, we talked to her after the game. Great state tournament for her as well. Double figures all the way through. But it starts and ends with Olivia Olsen showing why she is a McDonald's All-American. Talk about a complete player. She can hit the three, she can dribble, dribble penetrate, she gets her teammates involved, and then again, just a huge big bear hug from head coach Tim Ellison. Yeah, putting that trophy up and getting the hug from coach Ellison, punctuating a fantastic high school career. The statistics all tournament long brought to you by Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, freshly made and constantly craved. For me, the assists for Benilde St. Margaret's, 23 assists shows you how well they share the basketball as a team. Olivia Olsen, 97 points and 30 rebounds in three games in the state tournament. That's roughly, what, 32 points and 10 rebounds? That's not a bad weekend at Williams Arena. It's not. You know, this tournament has had so many good individual players in every single class, and Olivia Olsen is another one. I get kind of sad when they're seniors because I've enjoyed watching them play so much over the years, and now we don't get to see them at this level again. Benilde looking ahead to next year. Olivia Olsen graduates. But Kendall McGee will be back. Had a knee injury one year ago, missed all of this year. She's going to be a senior next year. So we may well see the Red Knights trying for a three-peat next year. But we congratulate them right now for the back-to-back -back titles they earn with an 81-58 win over De La Salle. Up next, 4A championship, Hopkins and Minnetonka.